In this video, we're going to explore planes in R3. Now, let's do a little review from geometry. A plane, you think of it as a two-dimensional figure, maybe a, an infinite piece of paper, if you could think of it that way. Uh, it's completely flat and goes out in all directions infinitely. And in order to determine a plane, you need three points that do not lie on the same line. Well, if you have three points that do not lie on the same line, that's equivalent to having two vectors which are parallel to the plane, but uh, are not parallel to each other. And we can do that by just letting one of the points be the common tail, and then the other two points will be the heads of those two vectors. So now we get a plane. The author uh, likes to use a capital pi. So that's the capital letter, Greek letter for P. So this is uh, just the name for the plane is pi. And it's determined by these two vectors, u and v, and the points P, Q, R. So if I want to find the position vector of another point A, which lies on the plane, how can I get to the point A? Well, first I have to go to the point P, and then I should be able to use a linear combination of U and V to get to point A. Let's see how that works. We saw this in a previous video uh, when we were working in R2. So the same construction is going to work. We're going to draw lines through our two parallel vectors. And then I'm going to cut and paste those lines. I'm going to paste them so they pass through the point A. And now if I had the actual coordinates of these points, I could, or the uh, components of the vectors, I could actually calculate the exact coefficients, the exact values for s and t, but here I'm just going to estimate it. I can see that the uh, distance in this, so I have a parallelogram now, and that parallelogram with the vertex a, the white line is about I'm estimating here maybe 1.2 times the length of the vector u, and the length of the blue line is about half the length of the vector v. So to get to point A, I would first start at the origin, go to point P, so start at the origin, go to point P, and then I would take 1.2 times the vector u and half the vector v. And I will arrive at point A. So our general equation of a given plane pi, so again, this character right here, I realize it's a little bit difficult to see the part that goes across there. Let me just draw something in there to emphasize. So that should just be a, a line. So that's a capital pi. So given a plane pi in R3, you have to have a given point and two vectors which are parallel to the plane. Then you can write the equation as, well, here you have the position vector of a general point. That's your initial vector and then a linear combination of u and v. Now, if you think about this for a minute, a line is a one-dimensional figure. In order to have a vector equation, we need one parameter. A plane is a two-dimensional figure. And so it makes sense that in order to have a vector equation which determines that plane, we're going to need two parameters, s and t. 
So the vector equation is a bit awkward. And we can actually eliminate the parameters from this vector equation and get a Cartesian equation which looks like ax plus by plus cz equals d. How do we do that? Well, let's look at an example. So we're given an initial vector with components 1, 2, negative 1, and our two vectors are u with components 1, 2, and negative 2, and v with 2, negative 1, 2. So let's start with a vector equation. From that vector equation, I can get three parametric equations by just setting the corresponding components equal to each other. So now the idea is, with this system of equation, our first step is to eliminate one of the parameters from two different pairs of equations. So in our example, we're going to eliminate s first from equations 2 and 3, because it's pretty clear. Look, you have a positive 2s in equation 2, a negative 2s in equation 3. So if I just add those two together, the s term will add out. And then I've got to eliminate from a different pair. So I'll choose equations 1 and 2. And I'll, again, I will eliminate the parameter s from that pair of equations. So first, the easy part, just add equation 2 and equation 3. I'll get what y plus z. Uh, 2 plus negative 1 is 1. No s, negative t plus 2t gives me t. And I'm going to find it useful to solve for t. So then t would be y plus z minus 1. Now what I need to do is uh, add equation 2 to negative 2 times equation 1. So if I uh, multiply, let me just work this out. If I go ahead and multiply equation 1, both sides, by negative 2, what do I get? I get negative 2x equals negative 2 minus 2s minus 4t. And if I add that to equation 2, I'll have uh, well, negative 2x plus y, that's the same as y plus y minus 2x. And then I'll have negative 2 plus 2, which is 0, negative 2s plus 2s, which is also 0, and negative 4t minus t, which would be negative 5t. So the next step is to remember to eliminate the remaining parameter. So we already el eliminated s. So now uh, with the new equations we got after eliminating s, we have to eliminate t. So our first equation was y plus z equals 1 plus t. And the second equation was y minus 2x equals negative 5t. And this is why we solved the first equation for t. We can just make an easy substitution into the second equation. And we get, after simplifying, negative 2x minus 6y plus 5z equals 5. So let me just mention one thing here. I'm going to type it out so that it's clear to everybody. So if you have taken a multivariable class and you may hold out the cross product and how it relates to the equation of a plane. That's great, but you need to learn this new method as well. So I will specifically tell you on quizzes or tests not to use the cross product.
You will receive no credit if you use the cross product, but you're welcome to use the cross product if you know about it and you want to check your answer. All right, so we've got our Cartesian equation of the plane, negative 2x minus 6y plus 5z equals 5. So one thing to note is the details here, and one detail is that we say a Cartesian equation. Why do we say a Cartesian, not the Cartesian equation? It's because it's not unique. Uh, we could multiply this equation on both sides by any non-zero real number, and we would get another valid Cartesian equation. So if I multiplied, for example, by negative 1, I would get a positive 2x plus 6y plus, uh, I mean, sorry, minus 5z equals negative 5. If I multiplied it by 5, I'd get negative 10x minus 30y plus 25z equals 25. And if I multiplied it by negative 1 fifth, I'd get 2 fifths x plus 6 fifths y minus z equals negative 1. All of these are valid Cartesian equations of the same plane. Let's look at another example. Um, very common idea. We know that uh, from geometry that three points determine a plane. Well, if I'm given the coordinates of three points that do not lie on the same line, I should be able to find uh, an equation of the plane passing through those three points. So first I have to make sure that those points are not on the same line. And one way I can do that is by looking at the vectors PQ, PR, and QR. If they are, all three are parallel to each other, then all of the points lie on the same line. And so they would not determine a plane. But if I just look at PQ and PR, I can see just by inspection, by looking at them, that they are not multiples of each other, so they're not parallel to each other, so these three points do not lie on the same line. Um, so now we've got our two vectors which are parallel to the plane. All we need is an initial vector, and we can use uh, the position vector for any three of the points, so I'll just use OP. And now I've got a vector equation of the plane with my initial vector, 1, 1, 5, and the PQ and the PR as my other vectors. Now we'd like to write that as a Cartesian equation, so we are going to repeat the same process we did. First we're going to write it as a system of equations, and then eliminate a parameter. We're going to eliminate, start by eliminating S, uh, from two pairs of the following equations. Now, in this example, we get a break because the second equation does not have the parameter s, so we don't need to eliminate it. We can go ahead and use that equation as one of our equations which is free of the parameter s. Now, I'm going to still have to use equation 1 and 3 and eliminate s from those two, to get a second equation which does not have the parameter s. So I'm just going to take negative 2 times equation 1 and uh, add that to 3. And that will give me z minus 2x equals 3 minus 3t. So we'll do the same operation. Now we're going to eliminate t by just t solving our first equation for t, substituting that into this second equation where I see the t, and that gives me 2x plus 3y minus z equals 0. So this is kind of interesting because I get a 0 on the right-hand side. And if you have a 0 on the right-hand side, that means the plane passes through the origin. Remember the origin has coordinates 0, 0, 0. And so obviously if I have 0 on the right hand side, if I put 0 in for x, y, and z, 
Of course, I'll get zero on the left-hand side as well, which means that I could choose back at the vector equation, I could choose the zero vector as the initial vector. So I should actually be a little bit careful here. Uh, this is really something that uh, I should not have said, but it's a learning experience here. I really shouldn't say the origin as an initial vector because the origin is a point. It's not a, a vector. So what I should have said is choose the zero vector here as the initial vector. And then we could get a vector equation of the form well, r equals s times u plus 2 times v. Because if I add the zero vector in there, it doesn't change anything. So I don't even need to list that. And so here is a very important fact that's going to come up throughout the course. And uh, the idea is that if you have a plane that passes through the origin, then the position vector of any point on a plane passing through the origin can be written as a linear combination of two vectors parallel to the plane. And uh, we saw that uh, in R2. That was definitely a true statement. We demonstrated that. And uh, the xy plane is not the same as R2, but it certainly looks like R2. And if I take the xy plane and rotate it, um, I, I get a, another plane that passes through the origin. So whatever I can do in the xy plane, I should be able to do with any other type of plane that passes through the origin. So uh, we found our Cartesian equation uh, for the plane passing through those three points. And uh, throughout the course, we like to learn how to check our solutions. So in this case, what I could do is go ahead and substitute the coordinates for each point into the Cartesian equation we found and make sure that we get zero on the left-hand side because we have zero on the right-hand side. And if I put in the coordinates for point P, I'll get 2 plus 3 minus 5. Of course, 5 minus 5 equals zero. Let's also check Q. It had coordinates negative 2, 1, comma, negative 1. So I'll get a negative 4 plus 3. That's a negative 1 plus 1 equals 0. All good there. And the last point, uh, point R, has coordinates 2, 0, and 4. So uh, I'll get 4 minus 4, which equals 0. All right, uh, interesting fact here, um, the intersection of two non-parallel planes is going to be a line. Two non-parallel planes meet in a line. Um, but I used the phrase non-parallel, so how can we tell if two planes are parallel? Well, if we have their Cartesian equation, if they are parallel to each other, the only thing that's going to differ is the uh, right-hand side. So if we can write the two planes uh, as ax plus by plus cz equals d1, and then on the second one, ax plus by plus cc, so the same a, b, and c equaling d2, where d1 is different from d2, then the planes are going to be parallel to each other. So let's find a vector equation for the line of intersection between the planes with equations 2x minus y plus 3z equals 4, and negative 4x plus 2y minus z equals 12. Now, you can see that there's no way, uh, if I multiply um, these equations by a constant that I can get the same value for a, b, and c. Uh, if I want to get the same x uh, coefficient, I'd have to multiply by negative 2. That would give me a negative 4x plus 2y uh, and then minus 6z. And so uh, these planes are not parallel to each other. 
All right, so what do we need for a vector equation of a line? The, we need the position vector of some point on the line, and we need a direction vector, which the direction vector is any vector parallel to the line. So let's start by finding a point on the line. Any point on the line would be a point common to both planes. So to simplify this calculation, we're going to make an assumption. And it's a pretty safe assumption, and if it doesn't work out, we're going to see that we can get around it. And we're going to assume that the line of intersection crosses the x-y plane. Now, in the x-y plane, z equals 0. So I can substitute z equals 0 into each plane equation. And then I'll get a system of equations. Now there's no z, because z is set equal to 0, involving only x and y. So I have two variables, two equations. I should be able to solve this system. And it has a solution, x equals 20 and y equals 36. So one point on the line has coordinates 20, 36, and 0. Remember, we set z equal to 0. So let's make a note here. We made the assumption. We assumed that it crossed the xy plane. Well, it doesn't have to. Uh, there could be uh, two planes that intersect, and the uh, line of intersection would be parallel to the xy plane and never cross it. What would we do then? Well, we could just make the assumption. Um, first of all, how do we know algebraically that it did not uh, cross the xy plane? Well, our 2 by 2 system of equations would have no solution. So how do we get around that? Well, instead of assuming that it crossed the xy plane, we could assume that it crossed the xz plane. Now, in the xz plane, y is equal to 0. And then we would get another 2 by 2 system of equations, so equation with two variables, only x and z, no y. Uh, if it still has no solution, then the line has to pass through the yz plane. So we would set x equal to 0 and solve the resulting 2 by 2 system. So uh, our vector equation now has this form. We know that it, it has some direction vector. We don't know the components of it, so let's call them a, b, c. We do know an initial point as 20, 36, 0. And we need to find the values for a, b, and c. We've got two plane equations, so I could take those uh, equations of the plane and substitute the par parametric equations in for x, y, and z. But it's even easier than that, because I don't need to have it uh, for every value of t. I can just choose any non-zero value for t, one that's convenient, like t equals 1. And then we can make the substitution x equals 20 plus a, y equals 36 plus b, and z equals c. 